everyone, and welcome to Weekend Rental, episode 97. We are your gaming and geek culture podcast. My name, it's Ryan. As always, I'm joined by Andy. Hey. And Biff. What's going on, guys? All right, if you enjoy our content, you can head on over to geekade.com and check out all the other great podcasts over there, whether it's video games, uh, comics, TV, m- movies, and more. Uh, it's all over there. You got to do the Lord of the News Truth. Um, you've got the Stone Age Gamer podcast. You've got this week's episode. All sorts of good stuff. Go check it out. Geekade.com. What's your geek? Three episodes away from the milestone. What what milestone? I don't know. We haven't planned for it yet. I feel like we need to do something big. I mean, 100 episodes, right? It's a lot. It, it's so many episodes, we don't have any ideas on what to do for 100, but... It'll be big. Well, a whole bunch of people are going to write in to our email and give us some ideas. Yeah, actually, can we request that at least 100 of you listeners out there write in? We need 100 emails for the 100th episode. You have a couple months because we're a biweekly podcast, but we would appreciate that. We'll read them all through and answer them or just read them. I mean, you could you could write in to tell us how much we suck and we we would read that. Yeah, we'll read it for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I cry off air. Yeah, we were planning on going on tour, but that's just not going right. to work this year. The so COVID really threw a wrench in the plan. COVID. Yeah, it's too bad. But we have a topic. Uh, we're going to talk about a property that is long forgotten, but still fondly remembered among a few. Um, we're going to talk Very about few. <laughs> yes, we're going to talk about the franchise. We'll go with franchise because it started off as a cartoon. And it blossomed from there. Maybe blossomed isn't the right word. It it did things from there. Uh, the cartoon series Cowboys of Moo Mesa. Um, I don't think you said it right. I think it's Cowboys of Moo Mesa. I, I will not say it like that. Plus, it's, it's Wild West C. O. W. Yeah, no, the no, boys. no, no. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're not familiar with this, this aired in like 92 and 93, um, 1992 and 1993. We're not that old. Uh, it was an animated series. Um, it was hot on the heels of uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles trying to catch that craze, a group of do-gooders fighting bad guys. Uh, the premise is pretty similar to TMNT also, um, except instead of ooze, it's a weird uh, meteorite that hits the earth and forms mile high Mesa transforms all cattle into two legged dominant beings that now Where did ride you get cows? this information. Cause I Wikipedia. did not get that. From no, the, the intro the whatsoever. Co- the comet. Yeah. The comet radiated well, on them and that's how they are together. I just yeah, assumed no, it was com- a weird yeah. world where cows are riding horses. Right? No. So instead of learning uh, ninja skills, they're just, gunslinging cowboys because it really sucks to be a horse in this world too because the cows evolved but the horses are still horses yeah. can you imagine that day them. imagine that yeah. day where they come over to the horse like you're mine now bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you just dropped a tear in this ladder here <laughs> so yeah i don't know you guys can maybe describe it a little better than i can i i, I tried to pay attention to this training wreck of a show but it's rough Well, this is something that I grew up watching, actually, from episode one all the way to its beautiful, beautiful ending, (laughs) like two seasons (laughs) done. (laughs) And um, I I don't know. This was one that uh, it it has a nostalgic factor for me. Um, Going back and watching it now as an adult, I was like, oh, man, this is some pretty, pretty bad cartoon. The voice acting. Awesome. I think uh, if you really listen to it, you can hear characters from, you know, other animated series. And so the voices are are really great. And I think they really tie in well with the characters themselves. It's not just some random voice. You know, you think of what was it? The All-Stars that we did where the voices were like, what is going on with like (laughs) Michael Jordan and and Bo Jacks and all of that stuff? Bo knows. Um, There's actually a couple similar voices with some of those supporting characters and stuff in this Mm -hmm. series too. So yeah, and so the voice acting's great. It's colorful. 
but the storylines, all of those things, there's there's just a ton of holes in this in this cartoon series. Uh, and I have so many questions. You know, there's a, a cow that's a floozy, and there's this this little little cow named Cody, and I don't know if it's the offspring of the floozy. I think it was another transient floozy who had already fled town. Uh, maybe, but that that cow seems so lost. I I remember episode one, or no, it, this might have been episode two, very well, where he, um, Cody was uh, getting chased down by the two evil guys or multiple evil guys, and he's knocking on the floozy's door for help, and he's knocking and knocking and yelling. And she just barely opens the door and peeks her head out. I wonder what she's doing behind that door. But, yeah. but she could not help that Cody guy out. I'll tell you, it takes a mouth and two hands. That's that's what's going on behind that door. <laughs> Milking the cow? Yep. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I think uh, the series overall was, was oh, something that I really enjoyed. The arcade, which I love now, that that's something that I caught much much later. But uh, the arcade is a is a sweet arcade. Okay, but, I need to pause because I just pause. had a great thought. So the the female characters in this show, um, they're clearly like structured more like bipedal humans. But do you think if those floozy cows and all the girl cows took off their bras and shirts, there'd be like four nipples coming out of each boob, or did it? Change to one. Are they are they more cow like or they more human like? I would think. I, I really feel like you need to go to Wikipedia for this one. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's one hell of a push up. They're gonna have to write the Wikipedia. Boy, that would look that would look yeah, strange. Think of, that, think of that just zero structure. It has to weird. right. It has to account for the four udders plus the tit. Yeah, that's that's something else. I can't look at this show the same now. Yeah, it's. I, I mean that. That's the other thing, like, you know, you see the people that, like, get all horny about Lola Bunny and all that shit, and it's like, this one, if, no. you, if you got horny about this one, it's you, you got, got a problem so, there. Yeah, it's hilarious, because Nate and I, I mentioned that to Nate, I was like, why do the female cows look so wrong? Because, like, the male cows clearly have a cow face structure, yeah. but they chose to make the female cows look like they almost had, like, miniature beaks. So it's like a beak on a cow body, and it just looks wrong. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, it makes you feel ashamed for bestiality. At least the turtles got it right. It's like, yeah, I can pine over April all day long as a child. But here, like, you're weird. If you had a hots for uh, <laughs> this floozy cow and the, the barmaid cow, something's not right with you. Yeah. And there's a lot of, like, why are there so many episodes where, like, the female cows are just hot over either one of the three heroes or whoever's passing through town? Seems to be a very recurring theme. Protection. It is Wild West. It's yeah. true. I'm yeah. trying to go back and think, are there other kids in this in this show? I don't remember seeing anything besides Cody. Yeah, outside of Cody, I can't think of anything. I think I saw a screenshot of a couple other kids, but I didn't see him in any of the okay. episodes I saw. And I like how every other race in this show that is not a cow is like the bad guy. Was there yeah. was there an example of a non-cow person who wasn't terrible? That's true. It's very speciesist. Yeah. Well, there's some bad cows too. Some bad That's bulls. True. Some bad bulls. <laughs> I love that the one character. That's pretty much all he says the whole the whole episode. He's like, oh. Or, you know, it's just <laughs> the minimum amount of is that uh dakota yeah yeah the, yeah, big, yeah the big strong cow i got a problem with that guy why so he's this big strong cow he can pick up rocks no problem without grunting it out but in other episodes when he's trying to save somebody and open doors or whatever it is he's like <laughs> like trying to break this door but he clearly picked up like a 20 ton rock no problem and just chucked it at a train maybe it's I, like it, that uh fraternal strength right like mothers who can like flip over cars and their kids in danger just but pure adrenaline can't right, open a yeah. freaking door in the heat of the moment he's all game but soft when he's not yeah it's definitely also, an over over the top you know kind of slapstick 
you know, when you throw it up against like the turtles, toxic crusaders, you know, the GI Joes, all of those kind of things. Yeah. Like there was humor in it, but it wasn't like the real strong cartoon humor where you have the, the sound effects like and Mm -hmm. people slipping and falling and, um, you know, probably as four year olds, five year olds were just cracking up at that stuff. But um it, it definitely seems to present to a younger audience, maybe when yeah, you look I at feel, all the other cartoons that were presented. I feel like the story, like I feel like the premise was they were trying to pitch it as the next tur- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but like from a storyline dynamic, it was almost more like leaning into rescue rangers or tailspin where yeah. it's just like not as coherent and it's a little out there um so that was kind of the bad part and to be honest like the animation on this was pretty Ooh. rough compared to other stuff the voice acting like we said you get all your heavy hitters like the people who did like uh goof troop um i'm pretty sure the one bad guy was the guy who was dr claw and inspector gadget um, in there. There's, yeah there's a ton of ton of recognizable voices but the quality of the voice acting does not match up to the animation at all. Yeah. There's, there's like a few spots I saw where like the mouth is open for like a good, solid like a second and a half during a <laughs> sentence. I'm like, Oh man, this is, they left the keyframes open a little bit on this one. I do love too, like all the dumb jokes to them being cows. Like I was pretty appalled at that episode where I don't, I, I got through most of these episodes. I just had them in the background when I was working out my garage and some stuff. And uh, there was a line where Cody's like, well, I'm sure glad you're not hurt, Miss Lady. I don't remember her name. She's like, oh, I'm not set for the frying pan yet, Cody. I'm like, but you're the dominant species. Why do you still see yourself as a steak? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Wow. Yeah, just yeah. eating steak. That's really it's a mystery. Yeah, the, if if this show has taught us anything is that cows can 100% survive off of sarsaparilla and that's all they need mm-hmm. for their health and fitness. That makes sense. Science. Yeah, it's got everything you need. Can I tell you a really sad story about uh, Cowboys and Moo Mesa arcade machine? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so the arcade, fantastic. I think we all agreed on that, that it really really is is a top arcade that nobody really talks about Mm -hmm. but i saw this arcade at a bowling alley one time and i was just kind of hanging out there eating decided to play and i made this comment to the owner of the bowling alley that hey if you ever want to sell it let me know and the artwork was good. I mean, it's classic arcade, a little sticky, you know, from all the nasty kids. But uh, he made this comment. Uh, he was like, well, if you want it, you could shoot me an offer, maybe a couple hundred bucks or so. And I laughed thinking it was a joke. And I left. And <laughs> for the longest time, I was like, I should really talk to that guy about buying it. Went back in and he's like, I sold it. For 200 bucks <laughs> and i was like what wait a second i could have had a full uh arcade cabinet of cowboys abu mesa for 200 dollars, but i thought the guy was joking he was serious i'm an idiot and cannot read people apparently so i missed that's a out. pretty uncommon one because that's at the end mm-hmm. of konami's run of arcade cabinets and that's and i guess that's the other point of like this conversation of cowboys abu mesa it was 100 percent the merchandising machine. Yes, they made a kid show, but it was to sell um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle like figures and to sell video games. And yeah, the arcade cabinet is fantastic. They basically went to Konami and Konami was like, hey, we just made the Sunset Riders game. What if we put your characters in it, but paid so much attention to detail to your character design from your show? And uh, yeah, they made an arguably better product than sunset riders uh very similar gameplay a lot bigger sprites i think a lot more interesting character design and colors um for that era it's and and level design too like there's Mm -hmm. some and it's a four-player machine which is significant or or is it three no it's four four. is it four okay yep yeah oh sorry i didn't mean to cut you off is it four 
Well, there's three who, main who characters, right? The, the fourth there's four character. characters, but I think it's three player, maybe. Okay. Because I did see it says press start two other times on the top. Okay. So I, I think go it's back three, and play. Yeah. yeah. No, it's fantastic. It it the game looks beautiful. It runs fast. It's got good sound. It's got interesting character design. It's not overly difficult, which is kind of crazy because it's an arcade game. But they really made it very approachable, minus some of your usual level bullshit from an arcade with like moving platforms, like mine carts falling off. That stuff sucks, but it's it's not insurmountable. I should have two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I should have done it. I really stupid. Like, I really like when you get to choose a level because uh, you know usually yes. you think then the difficulty is the same across all of them. That's not necessarily true, but. For the most mm. part, it's it was pretty equal, and then uh, until the end, I mean, the last boss is Bullet Sponge, and you really start putting continues in at that point. But up until that point, it's yeah, it's it's not bad. Did any of you guys ever own any of the figures? No, so I mean, in full transparency, like I'm a couple of years older than you guys oh, here. You say that or every episode, like you're so much more, old, older. No, but. I am old enough that this didn't register with me from a cartoon level. Like I knew I was aware of it, but like I didn't watch that stuff at this point. Yeah. Cause when I was um, five, you were seven. And so our minds were different just, though. Our minds were greatly different. It's a, it is a big difference in, in terms of like a cartoon connecting or not. Right. Cause I was five so when Turtles came old. out. I'm just saying so I, I missed old. out. I knew the show was there. I didn't, I didn't care enough to Too watch kiddie. it. I'm not or, watching this. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't connect. I didn't connect enough with it to even really care. But I did get super excited a couple of years later when I saw the arcade in a local arcade. And I was like, whoa, I remember that show. And then I played the game. and I was like, holy shit, this is great. And uh, that's kind of where my love for it was, was the arcade game. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm kind of the same age. And uh, I have to say mine was a little bit different. I didn't like the show that much because of the fact that my parents are a little bit older and they were very much into the gun smoke and <laughs> bonanza and all that shit. And we listened to a lot of old country music and stuff. So as young Andy saw this show, I was like Western, whatever I was. Right. I had, I had no interest in the Western stuff. And you and know, I that think you- theme song doesn't really help either. It's, it's pretty <laughs> It's straight yeah. up country. And I think you touched on the other big reason why this did not catch on, because this was very much the era where like the Western was like the, it was the big thing for the prior generations, but the Western was not looked at as cool in our generation. Right. Not at all. And I'm with you. Cause like we all grew up having to watch reruns of Bonanza and like your parents would just make you watch it. Even if you, you know, it didn't matter. So I think when you saw that cowboy theme, you're just kind of over it. Right. Yeah, yep. I have no idea who the demographic would have been on this. I mean, especially when you're watching the Turtles, I everything's in the city, the Batman's, the Spider-Man's, all that stuff. It's it's set in the city. That's where the crime is. That's what's going right. down. DuckTales, Rescue Rangers, same thing. Yeah, you know, no. They're all in cities. Yeah, no idea why someone would. And even if they took like a more of a spin on it, it would have been fine. But most of these, I mean, a couple of these guys are just straight up John Wayne, you know, and it's like, well, yeah, they they play it pretty straight right. laced that way. I think yep. the, the Colorado kid is probably the only one that was more, more like Michelangelo, you know, where the other two are, I don't know, more serious. He also looked the most like a milk cow, which is yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did anyone ever see the the figures in the store that they can remember? Because I don't know that I ever I, ever I seen them. Never, so. never seen them. I mean, I'd assume it like a Toys R Us or something back in the day or KB they might have had it, but I don't. I don't, recall. I, I don't know. I I was at a KB all the time, and I never saw. I mean, maybe I I just didn't even know what I was looking at. But well, and it might have been a case of like oversaturation, right? Because at that point, right. there were a million and one turtles figures. Plus, there were, well, there was Cowboys Mimesa, there were sewer sharks, there had been Bucky O'Hare. So, 
I'd imagine Hasbro had a hard time getting these figures into retailers because mm-hmm. at that point the turtles craze had dropped off. So they're probably sitting on all this stock, you know, no, I don't want your new cow figure. Thank yeah. you. And think about all those later turtle figures too. It was just a bombardment of garbage too, you know? Yeah. They all sucked. Remember that episode with uh teenage mutant Ninja turtles where they had like weird paragliders <laughs> and stuff. I'm like, no, I don't, but they made a whole line of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This one's different because its head folds into its ass and it looks like turtle shell this time. Okay. I yeah. wasn't aware that there were even figure figurines until until I started watching the show, you know, a few days ago. And I was kind of just doing some research and never seen them before. Yeah. I'm, I must well, have missed out. I mean, it must have been pretty. I mean, it was pretty short lived. Two seasons yep. for a a show, you know, and then by the time they probably already had the second season greenlit before really, I mean, at the, at the time they'd produced it, they're probably like, Oh, this thing's dead already, yeah. but I guess we have the maids. So we'll put it out. But yeah, I mean that, that type of business model where the turtles were, where it was like, you get everything set as a big marketing push media wide. You know, I wonder if this was just like, they ran through the initial plan and then it was just done. Cause I mean, yeah. like they made like three comic books and you know, couple other things and it's just like it just seems like that was their initial marketing push and then it was whatever after that it was just dead <clears throat> could you imagine if um this had been successful and they'd done a live adaptation movie like they did with turtles oh my like gosh jim, and jim henson's creature <laughs> shop had to make a bunch of like cow faces that articulated to speech oh my gosh <laughs> it'd be so disturbing <laughs> <laughs> that, oh that, that lady so oh strange. my gosh oh, oh yeah lady. there's no way there's no way that would work you know there's somebody somebody in the world that is just all about cowboys of Mu mesa they have every single figurine every single poster just fill one shelf in their basement living room with all things cowboy Mu mesa <laughs> they're known as the sickos that's that's how we refer to them yeah i can't believe that so it never came to dvd it's not streaming anywhere there's YouTube's like youtube's got the whole run though you can watch all 30 29 episodes somebody's yep. got them all up there so somebody must have had them recorded on their own vhs because i think they only put three episodes out on vhs so That's so, nuts. so somebody must have tracked down you know home recordings of it. yeah <laughs> broadcast airing smear local affiliate probably and like oh, i'm gonna save all these because this is important yeah uh, it's great yeah it's it's such an interesting show um with such a lasting legacy and i think most of that lasting legacy is just the fact that that arcade game is fantastic mm-hmm. and everyone's fondness for konami you know what i mean was there ever that- a port of that anywhere no and that's the great i mean again it died so fast but yeah this would have been a perfect snes game i mean sunset riders already runs great on the super nintendo but yeah you know you figure the arcade came out probably what 93 i think by the time that would have been home ported for home it's 94 the super nintendo's virtually dead or dying and who's gonna buy a game about some cow tv show that nobody's ever seen you know? yeah Especially when they didn't do Simpsons or X-Men ports, you know, so. That's true. This goes down in the halls of like the greatest tragedies from home ports. I mean, this is right up there with the Simpsons. The fact that it never got a standalone console release. Yeah. You figure more people would talk about it. But it just, it continues to just fly under the radar. Yeah. Well, I mean, you think about the, the Simpsons game. Think about how that was in virtually every yeah. arcade, mm-hmm. right? But I've seen a Cowboys of Mesa cabinet once in my entire life. Yeah. So the production had to be so small. I think that's probably why there was no exposure to it, right? Right. But even those like hidden gem arcade videos on YouTube, all of that stuff, it doesn't even get talked no. about. They're talking about, I mean, a lot of other strange stuff. Um that I would say this game is definitely more superior than some of those hidden gems that they have. So no, friends, right. go out there, play it. Mm-hmm. 
Find a find rum. a cab. Pay two hundred dollars for it. Well, make it happen. <laughs> well, just think about how long you could play on five dollars in this game back in the day. It, you could play quite a while, I bet. Till the oh, end, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Probably another reason why they don't have too many of them, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, the, maybe there's some option difficulty options with dip switches or something on there, but yeah, seemed pretty pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's good though. Like I mean, I, I after revisiting this franchise for this episode, I can I can honestly say like maybe pass on the toys and the cartoon, but for sure track down that ROM, play that mm-hmm. arcade game. Will Read we the see wiki arcade on the backstory. Uh, arcade one up. Are they gonna they make it? They haven't partnered with Konami yet, have they? No, if they, they did, oh my gosh, could you imagine? The Simpsons, Cowboys Moo Mesa. Oh, tweet it out. So good. Tweet it out. See if they'll catch it at all, guys. Just so you They're know, don't forget about this game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's a cool property. I mean, it's it's not a cool property, but it's interesting that a clone of something produced something so interesting in the gaming world. I guess is it's kind of neat, and I think it's nice to finally meet Biff, the one and only fan of. Fondly remembering this weird cowboy. <laughs> I might have the shelf show. of all things cowboy Mesa in my basement. <laughs> if not, I'm gonna start now. Yeah, for sure. Good luck. Those prices aren't super great on eBay, but I'm sure they're not horrible. <laughs> Those VHS tapes are going for like twenty bucks. Wow. Ugh, yikes. People are gonna come down to my basement and be like, oh, I see you're looking at my cows over there. <laughs> Are you interested? Are you interested in that story? I'm willing to share that with you. It's awesome. And then I'll <laughs> sing the sing the song. Well, speaking of other media, I see Andy has a topic here that I'm kind of curious on, and that's the new King Kong and Donkey Kong movie. Did I get that right? No. Nope. Yeah, yeah. King Kong versus Godzilla. Donkey Kong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was an epic lawsuit. I don't know if you heard about it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, we uh signed up for HBO Max just because that was a movie I kind of wanted to see, and yeah, it was it's pretty good. It uh I don't know, it doesn't have basically anything for story, and that's perfect. You just want just epic battle big, scenes. You just want a big monkey punch in the face of Godzilla. And that's what that movie is, pretty much. How long did that scene last? You know, they're not fighting. Are they fighting the entire movie? Or is it at the very end is when the battle goes down? See, that's what I'm actually pretty surprised about. You would think they would just wait till the end and be like, build up to that moment. Right. But it it's probably like 15, 20 minutes in. They have their first like pretty straight big battle. Fight, and it's a pretty good set piece. Um, really? At the end, there is a third party involved, so it's a three-way battle, kind of. Um, okay. Won't spoil anything beyond that, but I would say it's definitely the best Godzilla movie that I've seen. Really? Out of all of them, yeah. Yeah, but like like I was saying, like they, there's no story in here. It's like all the stuff with anybody's people's face on it, just ignore it, just... Does the military in this, you know, everyone's sitting back watching these two giants battle. Or are they just like, peace out? I'm not, yeah, don't need little, to deal with anything. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, they are in it a little bit, but they don't really come into it at all. It's basically like fleas on a back. Pretty yeah. much. It's just, just let them battle it out. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I feel yeah. like I need to watch it. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm surprised that they're you know, for HBO Max to just put out their new movies like that day one. It's pretty incredible for the, to, I don't know, make that bet. I don't know. Yeah, they'll get you used to it. And then all of a sudden start charging you, you know, just like Disney yeah. Plus, like we're releasing mm-hmm. all of our movies. Oh, you want to watch this new one? That's $40. <laughs> yeah, and then people that's like true. Ryan are like, I'll do that. $40? <laughs> Heck yeah. My kids want to watch that. I'm going to get a private movie theater for them too. Yeah. Yeah. 
but you know they have like all the old like looney oh. tunes and tom and jerry on there um those are so violent you can't let kids yeah. watch that it is kind of funny because my my uh, wife set parental controls so like nothing above tv pg would be allowed to play on the kid's side and yeah it was like tom and jerry like half of the stuff you couldn't watch because it was all too violent apparently um you know like the all the, nice. old, the old batman superman all those are also on there so we've been watching some of that but um the one that really surprised me was uh, it's an animated show just called harley quinn and it it's a comedy and it's amazing how it's kind of like deadpool but times 100 where it's a really adult comedy and they just let the animators or the whoever runs the show just like do whatever they want with any of the DC characters. So it's it's really crazy kind of like what they do. There's there's like for for an example, there's like one moment where there's this tiny guy who can control minds or whatever and he works for all the bad guys, but he gets kicked out and he's canceled because he called Wonder Woman the C word. <laughs> it's like so it's a lot of that type of comedy and you know yeah that's a lot of a lot of good jokes in there uh my wife actually enjoys watching it which is kind of crazy that you'd be like okay watch this animated show about <laughs> superheroes you know but i would recommend it because it's not something that it's normally just super you know superhero like it's just a good comedy interesting Speaking of DC, I just finished Injustice 2. Uh, not that that's anything that to, to pee your pants over, um, but this is a game that my son and I have been playing, and it really has been, you know, I'll battle, and as soon as I win or lose, I pass off the controller to him, and so it's just like every other turn. And, uh, I, I've learned that I really suck at fighting games. Like I start off really well and then I just kind of get bored with it. But my son, of course, just eats it all up. And, uh, he, um, he was just, just going for it. And I think Ryan, I was kind of done with it, but Ryan's like, they got really epic power ups. And I think that's what really kept us playing the game mm -hmm. where we wanted to see everybody's power up and see what they do. And so, yeah, it's an okay game. It's epic, uh, epic power ups, good graphics, real good graphics movement in the game is a little wonky. Um, it's amazing how many DC characters there are. And I know very little of them. <laughs> It, like I was like, is this even a thing? Is this, is this? I didn't even know this was a character. Uh, like Black Adam, I didn't know who that was. Um, I think there was something like a canary of some sort. Um, but yeah, and then at the end, spoiler alert: you're gonna have to choose what side are you? Are you Justice Team Justice or are you Team? Uh, what's the other one? Team something. I don't even remember what the very end is. Chose justice. Is this one where Superman goes crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I think he, I did play through that. He believes that you need to. It's okay to sacrifice a few people to save a lot of people, and Batman says no. Uh, we we try to save everybody, and so that creates this divide in the DC world where basically the, the heroes are splitting off and they're teaming with Superman or teaming with Batman. And then it's just this constant battle and storyline of people going back and forth. And so the story is kind of interesting. There's a lot of long cut scenes in it and that you kind of lose the excitement of just, I want to, beat these people up right away let's go and uh we had to be very patient where we're not skipping story and just take it all in but uh, we finally completed it 
And as soon as we completed it, my son was like, let's delete it. I'm done with it. And then <laughs> just he's done. He never wants to play it again. Just ready for the ready for the next adventure, I guess. But it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Yeah, I do remember that about the like the cutscenes go on for a while, but you can't just like set them down either because at a moment's notice, it just turns into a fight. Right. Right in the middle of the cutscene almost. It's yep. kind of crazy that they don't load in between or whatever, but. I think it was Poison Ivy. Is that what, who she is? Poison Ivy or Ivy or whatever it is. Yeah. She, uh, I would say, had the most effect uh, of power up. You know, my son was, it affected him the most because she grows this plant and then whips you into the plant and the plant's like chewing you up and the plant's like <laughs> disgusting and gross and, and all that. So, and my son was like, yeah, this doesn't scare me, dad. It doesn't scare me, but it's gross. <laughs> and and then like every time there would be a power up and he's like, yeah, it doesn't scare me. It doesn't scare me. So we knew it was terrifying for him. <laughs> that he was just trying to hide it. Well, if he's got those controls down, he's ready for Mortal Kombat then. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if he's not scared, show him the real stuff. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> Finish him. So did anybody else pick up um Monster Hunter Rise or just me? Just two you. copies. Two yeah, copies just, for you. Two copies, yeah. I uh I have all of about two hours into that. I, I sat down with my son and it just turned into this really frustrating moment because like I had to go through character creation with him, like try to get through the tutorial, try to get to the point where we could play together. So it was like all super rushed. And then we got into a few matches and things weren't going well because I'd rushed through and wasn't paying attention. And um, yeah, that's, that's about as far as I've gotten into rise. I was super excited about it. I still really want to play it. I just haven't had time. And my son was like frustrated because we couldn't just like get into game. Um, I will say that thing's beautiful. That's from a ground for a ground up engine and the switch. Capcom did a great job. It looks amazing. Um, it's very much Monster Hunter. There's a lot to pick up at the beginning. You get a, you get a lot of stuff thrown at you at at the outset before you can really get into the game. But um, runs great, looks great so far. I've done you know a couple small fights. Um, enjoyed it. it. It's it's a very uh, speedy game compared to the other ones in the series because you've got that dog that you can ride. You've got the uh, New Firefly abilities. Pretty good. That's awesome. Like, that's cool that they brought it out to the Switch and didn't, it doesn't look like a downgrade, like you said. That that was what I was yeah. kind of worried about, right? Yeah, and we were both playing on handheld, and I thought even in handheld it looked great. Huh. Um, I did read that they there was news today that there there's a new package. I have to log in because they gave away a gift package to everyone who bought it. Cause they, as of this week sold 5 million copies already. Um, <laughs> that's half of what world did in its first week, I think, but it's also a single platform, not multi. Um, and then they announced that it will be coming to PC next year. So. And is that going to be cross platform then? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Cross platform with switch is weird. Yep. But hopefully, um, you know, PC also is cross platform with everything else, but also world wasn't on switch so mm -hmm. i'm gonna guess probably not was world but, ever cross platform do you know i don't know gosh i don't know either i do know it had a big pc following though i know pc lagged behind the consoles but from what i heard the pc was like the ultimate experience so i'm guessing those people who have sat on world on pc forever are going to be really eager to jump into rise um yeah i don't know i i really I really appreciate that series. I think if you can get through like that upfront, like learning curve, there's a lot of fun to be had. So I, I'm looking forward to trying to find more time. The problem has been time um, to really dive in, get a few hours in by myself, figure it out and then go back and get my son going. So it was just too much to handle with two switches and uh, it was a mess. Yeah. That's always the enemy. The real enemy now is the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've been slowly still trying to get through Dragon Quest 11 on uh, Game Pass before it leaves. 
that's kind of the, the hard part is like you never know when that's going to be gone and it's not like you they can just announce be able to, it yet i i don't think so but they're kind of like oh it'll be gone in 30 days and that's not enough time to for me to beat a dragon quest game so i've been going through that slowly However, so what my, happens when you get to the end and all of a sudden they take it away? That would be, I would be screaming after all that time. They probably make, I'd probably buy it. That's what they'd want, right? At least you got um, all the time you want now with those Bethesda like RPGs and open yeah. world games. Now yeah, that's part of Game Pass. I already played them all though. So yeah. that's okay. I can, I cannot go back into those again. Um, you didn't play Fallout 76. Don't lie. No, that's true. That's. Uh, I don't know. After Fallout, I never <coughs> finished Fallout Four either. So I was kind of after that one. I was like, hmm, I'm okay on Fallout. But my son's been playing this game called Fogs on Game Pass. And if you don't know what that is, it, you, do you guys remember Cat Dog? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sadly, but yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like a puzzle platforming game where. It's like cat dog, but instead both sides are dogs. Um, and he's pretty good at it. He he likes it. Does you know likes the puzzle part of it, but it is absolutely ruined for me. I cannot watch it because he, there's a thing that extends and you wiggle it all the way around, and all I can see on the screen is general jousting, <laughs> and I just can't. I it just makes me squeamish just looking at. Just that that body just squirming around all over. Oh uh, yeah, I could see how that would uh, tarnish that for you. Why is it called fog and not dog dog? Then yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, don't know, but mm. it's one of those. You know, this looks weird. It's on Game Pass. Try it out. But there's a lot of those. What, uh, what art style is it? Is it like sprite or? No, it's it's 3D, but it's like that flat. Every you know, everything's a flat color, yep, colorful. Sure. Yeah, hmm. I'd not heard of that one. Mm-hmm. Um, an Octopath Traveler is on there now too, so I have to get into that. And yeah, that's a big one. Do you think that's going to hurt the value of the Switch card? <sighs> Probably. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of strange that it came out that much afterwards. After that long, you'd think it would just be a, you know, an exclusive. I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, they, if you're talking Game Pass, the crazy thing is that baseball, MLB, the show, which is a Sony game, is coming to Game Pass on launch day. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. And I guess the story coming out now is like Sony is saying that base like mlb is like forcing their hand to do it in some regards but it's still everybody's getting along yeah that's beautiful yeah. i could see that though like just enjoy the software they realize the the brand you know recognition that will come with being on game pass so yeah you know that's gotta hurt the sales on the sony side though I would have to imagine. I mean, there's some people that strictly have a PS4 because of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's think about the current gen, which none of us have dove into. Like if you have either of those machines right now and there's virtually nothing to play on either one, you have done so much better in getting the Xbox series because at least you've got the game pass games to go to. What do you have on PS4? Like, yeah, nothing. You know, or PS5. I mean, there's just, I guess there's that PlayStation now, but that doesn't have nearly the library. So, no. And that's where I think I've been on this, this teeter totter for a long time where it's okay. Should I get the PS5? Should I get the Xbox? I'm only going to get one. I don't really care to have both. It's just, that's a lot of money to, to throw down on systems that I'm not that excited about and probably will never be that excited about. I'm kind of leaning towards the Xbox just for what it can do and uh, the price point. Like you said, the, even the digital version could get you in there at mm-hmm. a fairly reasonable price. 
the only thing that I get hung up on with the PlayStation is Horizon Zero Dawn. Like that is right. a game that I want to play, but I'll let Ryan you, buy the PS4 and then we'll play it. You also have the you PS5. also have a PC that you could get Game Pass on, which is and that's why I'm not going to jump into the series because I'm good for the next few years with my Game Pass and my PC. And then I can buy a PS5 and get the exclusives when something comes out that I really have to play, which to be honest isn't yet. So I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's, you're still getting more bang for your buck with an Xbox, I think, right? Yeah. I think so. It, it you know, when it when you're looking at exclusives in this last generation like PS4 it kicked Xbox's ass as far as good game exclusive games, but kind of the way that Xbox has been buying everybody and making deals left and right, I don't know if that's necessarily the case this time around either. I mean, the big rumor now is Kojima's next game is going to be Xbox, which oh, is really, yeah. After Sony ponied up for that beautiful game that was Death Stranding, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure that did okay for him, though. I think that sold a lot. I don't know. Oh, that but, made money yeah. for sure. Yeah, got all those Norman Reedus bucks. Yeah, whether or not he can do that again, but you know, I think he's that's... gonna have a hard time. I think. Yeah. He lost know. some trust. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that it's 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 probably best to wait to just wait and see. You know, later on this year, you can probably have a better idea what's. Well, that's what's the thing, happen. though. It's tough because, like, even with the repercussions of COVID and the shift in development cycle for all major games, like game development studios, we might be coming up on another twenty twenty one Christmas season where there aren't must buy games for these already struggling new consoles. Um, your best bet again might be just to hang on to your switch. I mean, to be honest, yeah, I mean, we know there's nothing coming out for the Xbox one. We know there's not really anything coming out for the PS4, but it's pretty unlikely that some groundbreaking stuff is going to drop for the series or the five. I feel like without, I'm sure they'll each have one game, yeah. right? Exactly. So, and odds are whatever it's going to be, are going to be rushed, you know? Yeah. I Maybe mean, I'm Halo, wrong. Halo is supposed to be this year, but even that I'm not excited about. I, uh, that preview is so disappointing. Yeah. I don't even know if that's even going to be the same game as what it is after it was, that was like a year and a half ago at this point, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if 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 Nintendo could drop Breath of the Wild two this year, I think they would be kings of twenty twenty one. But that'd be awesome. We'll see what they happen. do. They have Pac Man ninety nine. That's all they need, right? Yeah. So this is out today. I believe so. Haven't and tried it's it. Ninety nine Pac Men against each other. Last to die wins. Hmm. It's kind of like all those other games where you're sending shit to the other screen. Like Tetris 99, yeah. I'm assuming. So you're sending fake Pac-Man to all the people that are still in. I don't know. Like Mario 35 was cool for a while. And then it just got to be, I don't know. You'd get toward the late game. It just became a slog to me. Well, yeah. When you started getting to the point where it was like 30 minute matches, it's kind of when I stopped enjoying it. Yeah. So, you know, it worked for Tetris. It kind of worked for this. I don't know how many games you can keep applying that type of attack players and dump other things on their screen. But we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I've always had a hard time with the strategy in Pac-Man, so I'd be curious to see how they've amplified that in a versus sort of setting but yeah well it could be wrong I mean, that like the pac-men that are getting sent to your screen are blocking you i don't think they eat you so, so it's you, more like a versus where you like bounce off each other sort of thing yeah so you're trying to like get a you know find different paths through it i don't know i could be wrong but okay 
I guess I'll have to check it out. I mean, it's free at least if you pay for the subscription. So mm-hmm. it blows my yeah, mind how many versions of Pac-Man there are. So many. I really like Pac-Man versus I really like Pac-Man. What is it? 256. Is that the one where like the world's degenerating behind you and you mm-hmm. have to like constantly move forward? That one's cool. And D- the championship. DX. Is that those what, are good. Yeah. The DX. There you go. Those are good too. Yeah. I just, I just put DX on my arcade cabinet and uh, I, I didn't keep those understand DX the off your card. arcade cabinet, Biff. That was stupid. That was a dumb joke. I realized in the two seconds of silence. That was stupid. That it didn't land, but oh. I thought I'd try for it. Didn't land. Keep those dicks off your arcade cabinet, Oh my Biff. gosh, yeah, I will. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, so I haven't really... I was a little confused at, at that game, but just kind of started it up and messed around for just a little bit and then moved on to the next thing. Yeah, it's pretty fun. They add a lot of new, like, subtle elements, you know, like the hop and like the train of pack. It, it's cool. It's yeah. It's a good, fresh take on a classic. The feeling it's better of, than it deserves to be. The feeling of hit like eating thirty in a row. It's just, it's yeah, very satisfying. Hmm. Yeah, they did a good job. I think I own both of them. Mm-hmm. I have one of them on a disc. I think I bought like some weird compilation thing. Maybe wow. I'm wrong. Maybe it was like a digital download. Probably that. I don't know. Pac-Man. Did you know he's in the Mario Kart arcade game? Yeah. That's weird. Like what? I guess Namco makes it maybe. I mean, that must yeah, be I think the it's reason, Namco right? hardware. That's my guess. It's a Namco Nintendo joint. So they're like, yeah, we'll throw them in there. You mm-hmm. and I played that right in Portland at uh, Ground Control. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. We didn't pick that game or character, but. Yeah. I also lost to you, which I'm not still mad about, but. Oh, I don't even remember. Oh, I do. I do. Huh. Not bitter at all. No. I don't remember a lot of games that I've played on like those type of things. Like, I feel like I've played Cowboys of Moo Mesa at one of those events, but probably not. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen it at a con, like in the arcade room or anything like that. Yeah. I don't think I have. Dairy Queen, my local hometown shop back in the day. It's the only place I've ever seen it. Wow. That's awesome. So, fellas, I uh, I took a trip. A lonely, lonely, lonely trip. Hey, I had reasons. To St. Cloud, Minnesota. Your reasons are lame. (laughs) Kind of. You're welcome for your safety. <laughs> I want to. I want to call out Andy first that he had to work on his water softener, <laughs> yeah. which is equivalent to I need to go wash my hair or I didn't shave, so don't touch me. That is the same excuse. And then Ryan, I did quarantine. shave. Quarantine. Oh, you did shave. Yeah. Hey, the school called. My kid was exposed. We had Weak. to quarantine for everyone's safety. Weak. And you're then welcome. What, what you don't have corona. When when someone goes to those things and you guys don't pull your weight and come with me, I get text messages. Hey, wait, what, what do you see? Take some pictures. What kind of prices <laughs> are are these? What, what's happening over here? Yeah. Uh, did, I, so did you ask let me, him about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me explain your uh, service and finding games. So I told Nate ahead of time. Hey, let me know if you see any Jaguar games. So I get a picture at like. I don't know, one o'clock in the afternoon and it's two Jaguar games on a table and Nate's middle finger into the camera. That's not my middle <laughs> finger. That's yeah. Not. Okay. Sure. No, that was Danton. Yeah. You, you Danton flipped me off. Yeah. Maybe. I think it was him. <laughs> I was like, Oh, that's a nice touch. <laughs> so I like, went what? up to the, I went up to the swap meet, um, uh, mobile game world. We've talked about it quite a bit. And I think we've been up there. What? Twice now, three times. <clears throat> And, Three, uh, this would have been four, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, you know, I I don't expect much at those. You never know what the the turnout's going to be, and it's kind of same guy, same inventory, those those type of situations. It, it was cool to, you know, see 
see guys, see friends. Brandon was there. Danton was there. Um, let's see. I think it's Ryan. Uh, he's we've seen him a couple of yeah, times. Yeah, the MBS I, guy, right? Yeah, and the Turbo Graphics kid. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a good guy. Yeah. So um, he actually was was talking to me a little bit about my Fortnite issue uh <laughs> that, oh does he listen to talking. the podcast yeah oh yeah. it's awesome shout out to ryan if you're listening yeah Thanks, so uh we were talking about those things but um yeah i, I think it was a, a realization for me that and this isn't a guilt trip by any means if you want to take it as one you can that's up to you but it's not fun going by yourself <laughs> and what i what i mean by that is like there was cool stuff and and there was a lot of stuff, but it wasn't like I wasn't excited to hunt. I wasn't excited to to look for things. I did have my son with me and taking my son is it's very complicated already where he's he's a young kid. He was best behavior. He was awesome, but he doesn't have the same passion for like hunting, looking at games and walking around multiple times that I do. And so he's like, Hey, let me, let me take a look at your list. And he's like, Oh, found it, found it, found it. I was like, no, this is not how this works. <laughs> and, and like he, he gave it to a vendor, my list and the vendor's like, Oh yeah, I got all this. And so he's like pulling all this stuff. And I had to tell the guy like, sorry, not interested. And my son is all confused. He's like, it's on your list. You're hunting don't you get it? And no, everything's very expensive. And I think that was my biggest complaint for, for the event. Just the prices were, were pretty crazy. And, um, one guy flat out told me that, um, it was because of stimulus. They assume that people has, have their (laughs) stimulus money. And so they raised their prices. And so when people tell me that I don't get that excited, and then just At least going he's through honest, and, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's a thing, but yeah. uh, it doesn't make me want to purchase anything from him. But went through the NES bins, didn't find, really didn't find anything that I was excited about. Um, but I hit some of the shops around the city and kind of our, our round that we typically do, the Pan Americas, a couple other thrift stores. Uh, shout out to sneak attack games i love that store i really do not that their prices are incredible or or anything but it's just a cool store it's very clean they have anything new though for like their exotic inventory or was it just the same crap we've been they looking had a at? lot more mvs games which was interesting yeah. i don't remember them having those uh there were a couple of new turbo graphics 16 games there that i certainly could not afford and like um, I can't even remember off the top of my head, but you know, everything, everything that they have, I would say is pretty minty, uh, except for clean. that wall of sun faded Xbox games that they yeah. just like bake well, in the front. It's GameCube now. So Ooh, that, Ooh, that's, a bad choice. that's not good. You don't do yeah, that. I turned around. I was like, Oh, I got to check out the GameCube and every label was faded. I was like, I'm not interested in that. It's not um, smart. But I still, I just, I like the store. It's clean. It's wide open. It's not filled with a whole bunch of BO or anything mm-hmm. like that, that you can just shop. And the guy actually likes to talk video games. And so I kind of appreciate that too. So I uh, picked up a couple of things. I picked up uh Parasol, what is it? Stars. Parasol Stars on Turbo Graphics. Nice. Um, CIB Minty Minty. And then I picked up, what did I, Jet Set Radio? Jet Grind. Yeah, Jet Grind Radio, not Jet Set, Jet Grind well, No, radio. it is Jet Set in Japan, yeah. Yeah, on, um, on Dreamcast. And that was something that Ryan's been talking about a lot that I should check it out. Interesting art style. I haven't tried it quite yet. Um, and again, prices aren't prices that are going to blow you away. Like you're sneaking massive deals, but for what he has and for how clean it is, I was willing to pay, you know, 40 bucks for that. And I mean, it's price charting, but like you said, it, it is well maintained and a lot of stores don't even keep that type of stuff in inventory anymore. So yeah, 
you know, MVS, Turbo Graphics, like you just don't see that. And yep. I don't know how they, mm-hmm. they must've gotten the right collector to just unload that stuff. But. Yep. I think it was uh, the highlights. Well, just, you know, there's always somebody that has some type of oddity at these things that you're just like, how in, how in the heck did you get this? Some dude walking around and I'm pretty sure he walked in with it, uh, with the Neo Geo CD complete in box. And like this box is huge. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen one complete in box. It could barely fit underneath his arm. And he's walking around <laughs> for hours just carrying this thing around. And, you know, he's not interested in trading it or selling it. He's just saying, hey, I got big balls. Look what I got. And I think that was I think every table he walked up to people were like, oh, my gosh, Neo Geo CD. That, that's amazing. and. And then you just like, yeah, and just like keep on walking around <laughs> with this giant box and everyone would ask him, is it complete? Oh, yeah, 100 percent complete. And just like, you know, just it was like a parade for him. So it it's was the most uh, inconvenient way to play Neo Geo games, too. But right. It is very cool. I will give him that. Very cool. Uh, very expensive. But um, yeah, and just an oddity that you I've never seen one before. And so that was kind of cool to see. Mm -hmm. um there's a lot of nes rares there and multiples i don't know how many like i think there was like four to five copies of scat there were uh sword master there i think a couple sword masters actually um there were yeah just some of those like pretty pricey uncommon ones but again the prices were were so heavy and just wasn't i couldn't do it i couldn't pull the trigger but i felt like you when you take those trips you gotta buy something <laughs> to make you feel good it's funny because if know. i would have been there you and i'd have been just you'd have been throwing out money left or right just like buy stuff out from under me yeah I feel bad that i wasn't there to make you open your wallet yeah <clears throat> just when you're not yeah. around my my wallet tightens up like, oh, I have nobody I, to rub this in the face of. I guess I, I can't I, buy anything today. I don't know. I mean, that Parasol Stars has been there like the past two times we've been there. Right. It right. has been. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. But cool to to see some of the guys that listen to the show and uh, just friends of, of ours that um, grow in their collections. I think Brandon picked up some pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, like he had I was a, super... like CIB Sega CD, which is kind of cool, and mm-hmm. yeah, just yeah. a lot of a lot of interesting things. Yeah, it was pretty disappointing that like all that unfolded the way it did because I think it was that Wednesday of that week leading up to it where we got that call from school that oh yeah your kid's been exposed in close proximity to COVID and oh super so then I immediately had to leave the office and go start working from home and that was that was great great stuff. Yeah. You guys dropped like flies. I had a good reason. I got clean water now. Weak. Weak. Soft hair. You got bo- you got bonding time with your kid. It was good. Yeah. We did uh we did a hit up uh GameStop in Alexandria. They're closing. Mm-hmm. And uh so everything at that time was thirty to fifty percent off. And that actually was you know, we picked up some decent stuff. Uh, Switch Pro controllers were thirty bucks. Uh, Xbox, we picked up some Xbox controllers as well. Uh, thirty bucks; those were new, um, which was pretty awesome. Um, and then picked up some of those like pretty classic PS4 games or um, you know Xbox games that probably won't ever play. You've played them already, but just to have a physical copy of them. So picking them up for you know five to eight bucks a piece wasn't too bad um so that part was was kind of fun for me and my son just to kind of dig around and you could see the employees and they're just like overwhelmed like people are in there just killing them on deals and you Mm -hmm. know just whatever they're losing their jobs they don't care anymore and this guy came in and uh he purchased i don't know some some new game i don't even know what it was he came in he's like yeah i bought this game and it was um yesterday 
we went to Walmart. It's $20 cheaper over at Walmart. And so I want my money back. And the guy's like, I can't do that. We can't. All sales are final. And so that's just how it is. <laughs> there's sign, there's signs everywhere in this. All sales are final, all new, old, all sales are final. And so the kid goes, if you want to make an exchange, you'd have to go to the nearest, uh, nearest one, which is in St. Cloud or in uh, Wilmer, maybe yeah. Wilmer. And the guy was just like losing his mind <laughs> over this. And he finally got so pissed that he chucked the game at the guy behind the counter Whoa. and then just walked out. And so he had he lost his game, <laughs> paid overpaid for it. <laughs> Just Were you like, can I have that? I'll I take it. He ask. doesn't want I, it. And the guy was just like, whatever. And, you know, like, I'm done anyways in a couple of weeks. I don't even care. And and just right. mouthing off as loud as possible as people are just walking around oh, the store. Wow. So it was it was uncomfortable, but kind of funny to see just someone. Because, you know, the guy wasn't going to walk back in and be like, yeah, so that game that I threw at <laughs> you, can I? Can I have that back, sir? You know, just, I don't know. Those moments are, those moments are funny. Oh, wow. So have you been swooping in and getting deals in Andy? No, no I haven't. That's going under? I haven't okay. been able to. No. No, there's been COVID related problems over here too. So. Oh, geez. You got that Rona? No, but people around us. Mm. Yeah. Daycare? Yeah. Schools. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. So you didn't cut your hair, you pulled it out. Uh close. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've been meaning to get down there. I'm sure I'll be down there a few times. Yeah, I think the last day, I can't remember what the last day was. End of April, I think it is. Okay. April twenty something. Twenty fourth, maybe sticks out in my head for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got to remember too. There's Fargo Comic Con next weekend, which there will be some vendors there. So, oh, okay, yeah. Does, does anyone know is Brandon coming to sell out that one? I don't know, Brandon. Mm -hmm. did last USA. year, call us right now. This is a live show. Yeah, this will air uh, the night before you'd be driving up and setting up. Hurry so please up, get, get back here. to us immediately. It's very Beep. important. <laughs> call us back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna hit that. So we should maybe you got to pay to mind. get in, right? You do, but I've found some pretty decent stuff there the last few times. Yeah. I'll go to that. Comic Con. Unless yeah, we'll you guys go. gotta wash your hair or whatever. No. I'll, we should I'll go wash together. my hair before going, but yeah. Yeah. We yeah. should hit it at the same time on Saturday. So not... Oh, you wanna hit it at the same time because <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I need... doesn't want any deals. I keep my, my collector friends close. My enemies even closer. You guys are one you're one in the same. You're my friend yeah. me front of me yeah let's go exactly the same time and walk through the door exactly the same time and yeah i'll pick you, you up we'll get some coffee i'll feed you a like sandy's cinnamon roll so that you, you can't keep up with me, a me. Cinnamon roll. i'll buy you a damn cinnamon roll okay it'll make you happy jeez jeez a grumpy gus and then you'll just block me block me from the bins Kind of scared though with the stimulus, like you said, they're just like bumping up prices though. Like, yep, yeah, how can you sure? not not wavering either? The guys that I were that I was experiencing, they weren't, they weren't because well, they can go on eBay, right? Like, every, that's what people are doing. They're going on eBay and buying these games like complete mm -hmm. or inflated yep. prices, and yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, they're they weren't dealing. This guy, even it, I think it was like a ten dollar item and pretty minimal. And I, they were fighting over $3 or the guy was like 10 and he was like five. And he's like, Nope, not doing it. Uh, seven. Nope, not doing it. Eight, not doing it. 10 <laughs> is what I'm paying. And I'm like, come on, let's just, I don't know. That yeah. stuff drives me nuts. I mean, nuts. If, if prices are high on eBay, then you should be selling it on eBay right now. You know? Right. A hundred percent. When it's someone in front of you, it's different. Yeah. Right. And it's different if it's like at a retail store where they have overhead, but this guy like just drove to a swap and like put it on a table, you know, yep. like, yep. come on, man. I was a big, big idiot. Didn't get cash before I left. I was like, they have an ATM there. The ATM was not there. 
So I'm walking around with no cash. I have Venmo, PayPal, but I don't want to go somewhere to an ATM, to some bank and pull money that I probably am not going to spend or whatever. And so I felt a little helpless as well, where if I did find something, I was like, any chance you Venmo? And the guy's like, cash. <laughs> okay, it sounds good. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, it drops into your account, no fees for Venmo. So, um, that that's the way it is. Yeah. Didn't go over well, huh? No, that's my rant. I'm done. I mean, I feel like not to make you feel bad, but like make me feel you, bad. You've been in this game a long time. You probably Shut know up. you should show up with some cash. Shut up. I knew there was an ATM there, but there wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't there shake your kid down. You're like, open your cash. wallet. Yeah. Yeah. There was enough people that would have had cash if I needed it, but live on to collect another day. Right. Guess so. What's, what's your guy's appetite for flea markets this year? <sighs> Hungry. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'll be fully vaccinated. I want to hit that St. Cloud one. Yeah. I, I do. I want to start doing garage sales hard too. Oh, yeah. like people are going to be ready to be back for it. And I'll have nothing you're to done. worry about. You're done collecting and now you're collecting because I'm collecting. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I buy other so, things at garage that sales. So guilty. No. no. You're not collecting. What are you buying? You bought a bunch of Xbox games? Go fuck yourself. I don't care. <laughs> you want some Xbox games? I got a box. You can take them. <laughs> don't tip me. I'll be over yeah. in two seconds. I mean, flea markets might potentially be better than ever because people have not had an outlet to sell stuff. So like the yeah. first month of flea markets might be insane. Yeah. Or the or people that just complete shit or the people that did flea markets and couldn't do it last year. So they started selling it all online. That's true. One too. of the two. Yeah. You're right. There's a hole in my theory. Andy, are you going to do flea markets? Are you going to sell stuff this year? I don't think I'll sell stuff, but you should. <laughs> we I should go. do that St. Cloud one, though, for sure. That was really fun that day we hit that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not too hopeful about Shady Hollow. I think that's going to be continuing to decline because that's been bad. That's just a craft show at this point. Shady yeah. craft show. Yeah. Pretty much. There's not. Any other ones around, right? There's Not one in Jamestown. Worth going to. Yeah, the Jamestown oh, yeah. one I've heard is kind of like meh. Valley City uh, does a couple a year or two. Um, but they're Sioux Falls, South Dakota great. does one, Benson. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know. I have seen garage sale signs already though. That's fun. Mm-hmm. I feel like I can't even remember how many years ago I did not miss one. I'd see, see a sign and instantly pull over Thursday, Fridays. That was my thing. And then I met Ryan and everybody else that was doing the same thing that I was doing. (laughs) I lost interest really Mm -hmm. fast. Yeah. I used to really like when I, would work from home on Fridays and like I would just spend my lunch breaks. It'd take like a two hour lunch break on Fridays and just hit sales and like, holy crap. You can, if you can be the guy who's out at like 11 to one on Fridays Thursdays, yeah. to get some shit. Yeah. Well, that's what sucks. It's like people just do it earlier and earlier now. Mm-hmm. But yeah. By the time you get to Saturday, you're screwed. Yeah. Saturday, there's nothing left. The Half of them are closing up already. They're like, <laughs> yeah. Ed, Which is know, weird because I've held garage sales at my place and I can't get anyone to show up even on a Saturday. So it's like, I don't know what huh. gives, but. Yeah, that's weird. But I don't know, like last year, I don't know if I found. I think I found a good thing of PS2 games that were like a quarter a piece, but other thing like no retro stuff at all last year. And I went to a decent amount of them, but. It's one of those things I, I think that you know people know about it first of all and like the the people that are going know that they're worth in worth something even if they're not into it 
Right. Yeah. yeah Cause there's a lot of those flipper people. Yeah. And I'll see them do it and they're buying junk sometimes. Like they're buying stuff that isn't worth anything and they're like, Oh, grabbing it all, you know, just because they, you know, you buy video games, they're worth it. But yeah, I didn't go to a single garage sale last year. I skipped them all. Me too. So I'm kind of mm. hungry for it again. Yeah. So we'll see. Let the games begin. Is it intimidating? So like I, I'm obviously down in a small, smaller area where you can hit every garage sale in the town. Like Fargo, you, you can't do that on a weekend. So how do no. you, how do you do that? No. So I used to take the time and like map it all out and have my route for the day. But then I realized that like when you do that, because you're going based on the description that people list online, like in the paper, you almost never find the prices, the deals for the things you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So I kind of stopped doing that. And I just go to areas where I know that people are going to have sales and you usually find random ones. So I'll just go to certain neighborhoods where I think, traffic is less likely because they have the best luck. Like people are going to go to South Fargo. They're going to go to Eagle run in West Fargo. There's a couple neighborhoods, but what I like to do is generally head in the wrong direction. Like go to Moorhead, <laughs> sorry, Moorhead, uh, or go to North Fargo because people aren't hunting in those areas. And cause the money, well, not, that's not necessarily true for in all cases, but the money isn't in those areas. So people are thinking like, ah, it's just junk up there. And that's where I have the best luck. I kind of just at this point, enjoy getting lost, you know, unless it's like one of those neighborhood wide sales. And I know I can get like 40 places in 10 minutes. I just go for the out of bounds areas. And that's where I've gotten my best finds. Yeah. It's almost always the, the, the best finds are the ones that have like the least amount of description of what's there, you know? Mm hmm. hundred percent. And some of the best ones too have just been like the random because they're always poorly listed. It's one where people ones where people get frustrated where it's like an apartment complex. And there's like a sign and like eight rows of garages. So most people give up before they even find the place. And you like find some guy who's just like throwing a bunch of boxes on the ground and you find, you know, Digimon two or whatever, mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of DVDs you were looking for. So I don't know. I've completely changed my strategy on that. So the only way to really succeed without like ripping your hair out is to go in the wrong direction at this point. I'm going to start or, going in the wrong direction. Yeah. Or you get there and watch 10 other people beat you to the thing you wanted. What hurts less? Yeah. I guess not, not knowing hurts less to me. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I still think there's some value in those neighborhood wide sales just because even with descriptions, there's so much stuff going on. If you, if you're, if you're freaking meticulous about it and like leave your kids and wife at home and you just run through perimeter and then hit the next thing, that first hour can be okay. But even nowadays though, I don't know the last time I found anything that I would consider truly a retro or at least not CD based. It's been, I don't maybe have been, it might've been three years since I found like a cartridge game at a garage sale. Yeah, probably the same for 64. me. Yeah, it's nuts. And I just don't get excited about PS2 and Xbox. If I come across there's PS2, Xbox, and Wii, I'm probably not even stopping to look through them because I'm on to the next thing. You know, I want the guy who's got like the Genesis on the floor or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's rough. It's a rough world out there for us poor collectors. True that. True that, homie. True that. I wonder if they're going to do that indoor citywide thing in West Fargo this done year it already. I think so. It's only typically, April. Typically Saturday before Easter. Really? really? Wow. That's early. Yeah. Huh. Too bad. That one kind of sucks lately though, too. It used to be great. I never it used to be great. I never thought it was, I never had great. I had a couple of good finds there, but. I don't know. I probably didn't get in on it as early. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe if you're listening, you let us know what you think about the state of garage sales. You can email us. That's the thing you can do. 
You can. And maybe this is an episode we wrap. What do you guys think? Yep. What do you want me to wrap about? Whatever you want. It's time for the end. Nope. It nope. is time. Nope. You said rap, and I will do that. <laughs> All right. Anyways, that was that <laughs> We're was very my, sorry for that, everyone. That was my Will Smith impersonation. Okay. Um. Okay. So you had a challenge. We need a hundred emails by our hundredth episode. You better get writing. Uh, yeah, or just sure send us send questions. That. Well, we that'd be fun. People want to send questions in, things they want us to talk about. Put uh, episode 100 in the title. Let's do yes, that. Yes, anything, anything at all. We can rental podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following us on all of our social media Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of those good things. And you can find all things we can rental at weekendpodcast.com. Friends, be kind. And rewind. Colorado. Let's rodeo. How many others do you have? <laughs> <laughs>